All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Musarat, and I'm the Senior Investment and Trade Advisor here at Investment Fiji. And it is my pleasure to be your MC for this uh, webinar. Before we start proper, uh, please note that may you have any questions, you may write it in the chat box provided because we do have a live Q&A session towards the end of this webinar. And uh, at the same time, we hope to wrap up the program within the next hour or so. So thank you once again for joining us. We still have a few people coming in. Yeah, at the moment we are 22. I think we can start proper now. So thank you, everyone. The director of Pacific Island Center, Mr. Ruzo Saito, industry partners and business representatives, participants from Fiji, Japan, Australia, and US. Ladies and gentlemen, Bulavinaka, konnichiwa, and a very warm welcome to you all for joining us. It is an absolute pleasure to welcome you this afternoon for the Fiji Japan Export Webinar, and we appreciate your interest in knowing more about the export opportunities in both the countries. This webinar is actually part of the Fiji Japan Investment and Trade Mission 2021, which was officially launched at the beginning of this month to mark over 50 years of bilateral relations between our two countries. We encourage you all to visit the official website of the Fiji Japan Investment and Trade Mission to learn more. So do kindly take note of the website address, which is shown on the screen at the moment. Our program for the day is quite simple. We will have two main presentations before we open the floor for audience questions. Our key speakers today will highlight more on Fiji's premium export products and exporting opportunities into Japan. But to start off today's session, we bring to you a welcome message from Japan's ambassador to Fiji, his Excellency Kawakami Fumihiro. Fiji Japan Trade and Investment Mission 2021にご参加いただき誠にありがとうございます。在フィジー日本国大使の川上文弘でございます。我々在フィジー日本国大使館は 日本とフィジーとの関係強化に日々取り組んでおりますが、とりわけ医療国間の貿易、投資を中心とした経済関係の強化が大きな課題となっております。今回、コロナ禍にもかかわらず、フィジー投資庁の力強いイニシアティブに
日本企業の持つ高い技術力、質の高い製品、サービスをフィジーの市場、産業とうまく結びつければ、新たなビジネスチャンスを得る可能性が大いにあると考えております。現在、新型コロナウイルスの世界的流行で実際にフィジーに来訪することは困難な状況でございますが、フィジー投資庁による今回のフィジージャパントレードインベストメントミッション2021では、オンラインによる各種ウェビナーや1対1の個別ミーティングなどが企画されております。今回のイベントへの参加を契機として、皆様がフィジーとのネットワークを構築し、将来的にフィジーとのビジネスで利益を得られることを願っておりますフィジーとのビジネスを検討されている皆様にとって本イベントの主催者であるフィジー投資庁は信頼のおける強力なパートナーと言えますフィジー投資庁のウェブサイトインベストメントフィジーでは貿易投資に関する多くの有益な情報を得ることができますまたフィジーを含む太陽州島し国との貿易投資を促進するために設立された国際機関である太平洋諸島センターが東京にあります。このセンターには本イベントにも支援いただいております。日本人職員が常習しておりますので、フィジーとのビジネスに関心のある方はお気軽にご相談ください。もちろん、日本政府も皆様への支援をいたします。本年7月2日にオンライン形式で開催された第9回太平洋島サミットにおいて、日本政府はオールジャパンでの取り組みを通じ、日本と太平洋島し国との間の協力をさらに強化するための太平洋絆政策を発表いたしました。具体的なビジネスのご相談は、当大使館だけでなく、ジェトロ、ジャイカといった機関もお手伝いいたします。特に、フィジーへの進出を検討するための調査が必要な場合には、JICA が調査にかかる経費,を経費を負担する中小企業 SDGs ビジネス支援事業をご,ご活用いただけます。インターネットで JICA 民間連携と検索いただければ、受けられる支援の詳細をご確認いただけます。9月下旬の時点で、フィジー国内のコロナワクチンの2回接種率は、成人対象人口の 70% を超え、コロナ新規感染者数も大幅に減少しております。フィジー政府は11月に国境を再開し、海外からの渡航者を受け入れる方針を示しております。皆様がビジネス交流のためにフィジーに来られることをお待ちいたしますとともに、今回のフィジージャパントレードインベストメントミッション2021が、皆様にとって有意義なものとなり、今後の具体的なビジネス展開のきっかけになることを強く願っております。Uh, that was also a keynote message by Ambassador Fumihiro towards the Fiji Japan Investment and Trade Mission. And once again, we are really appreciating for the support,、uh, appreciative, sorry, for the support that.、Um, The Japan Embassy has been giving towards investment Fiji. So I now invite our first speaker, Mr. Kamal Chetty. Mr. Chetty is the acting CEO here at Investment Fiji and has served、uh, with the organization for over 14 years now. And he will present on the global trade overview, Fiji and Japan's economic relationship, and some major initiatives undertaken by Investment Fiji in the last couple of months. Thank you. Thank you, Mushar,、uh, Mr. Saito san.、Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's、uh, indeed my pleasure to be、uh, here tonight,、uh, today, and speak on this event. And thank you very much for joining us.、Uh, with Investment PG, we've been you know, running this、uh, the Japan Fiji、uh, investment and trade mission basically to、uh, promote Fiji and also promote Japan in Fiji. So it's, it's,、uh, it's an important relationship that we have between. Uh, Japan and Fiji, that we try to you know, increase at the same time, with from investment Fiji's view, the economic and the trade side of things. We try to you know, market it and also increase that. So, I will basically very briefly talk about you know, the opportunities or overall what's happening in terms of relationship and some of the initiatives that we have done at Investment Fiji to continue to promote、uh, Fiji as an investment and trade、uh, destination. And at the same time, I think it's、uh, 
it's quite exciting news for all of Fiji as you know the borders are opening. Uh, there's uh, there's possibility now to travel to Japan and also other countries around, and on, at the same time to receive visitors this side. So I think that's quite an exciting news for us as we move towards attracting investment into Fiji and also try to uh, take Fijian businesses overseas. So I will uh, briefly just uh, go over the, the presentation. Just a role of investment Fiji. Uh, last week, before last week, you talked about the investment side of things. So obviously one of our role is to attract investment into Fiji. Uh, but the other role that a lot of people are not aware of is we work with exporters to find new businesses overseas. We try to also build capacity for exporters. So we have a number of programs that we run in order to assist exporters to reach different markets. At the same time, we also try to get them uh, you know, connected to buyers overseas. So that's, that's a role we play in terms of uh, export of Fijian products overseas. For a trade overview, uh, just, just a very brief in terms of what Fiji is currently doing. So there's expectation that global trade is going to improve by about 16%. And uh, the same thing we're, we're thinking about Fiji. Actually, some of the companies during COVID have done really well in terms of exports from Fiji. So for 2020, our exports were $1.14 billion uh, in terms of domestic exports and re-exports were 648 million. And this is mostly uh, re-exports of mineral products, machinery, equipment, and animal products into Pacific Island countries. But I think it's important to note that Fiji continues to you know, do well in certain segments of exports. So which, which we saw uh, a lot of exporters take advantage of when COVID hit. So that's, that's basically in terms of what's happening globally. In terms of our economic relationship with Japan, uh, currently, we export about $43 million of products, uh, which is dominated by wood chips, tuna, and mineral water. But we also import about $123 million, Fijian uh, million dollars worth of products into Fiji. This is mostly vehicles, mineral fuels, cement clinkers, and other things. We also have uh, a number of investment into Fiji. Uh, recently, a $5 million investment uh, into different sectors. Uh, but... I think overall there is also bigger investment. So if you look at Japan, we recently have you know investors into our renewable energy or sorry, our energy sector. So that was one of big projects that has happened from Japan. So the relationship is already there. We are trying to build on those relationships with our activities. Some of the major initiatives that I wanted to just elaborate for you know, for the for the forum for all of you that we, we are doing at Investment PG. Uh, for each country, we have market plans, uh, so including uh, market plan, plans for different countries, including for Japan. So in that plan, we basically know which are the products we're going to take to those markets and what are some of the techniques uh, that we're going to use in order to promote it. So for, for us, uh, you know, when COVID hit, uh, we couldn't travel, uh, but we continue to deliver services through online. So we, we came up with a number of initiatives that uh, was to continue to promote Fijian products and investment. So one of them is we had to come up with a new website that was more interactive and more fresh, uh, which includes new incentives offered by the Fijian government now uh, in a number of sectors. Also, it talks about a number of opportunities that exist for exporters and what are the market, you know, what are different markets where Fijian exporters can go. And also a number of programs like, uh, which I'll talk about exporter guide and other things. So we, we, one of the initiative was our new website and please, you can go and check it out it will give you a lot more information in terms of exporting and investment. We also launched uh, something we call uh, with MDF, uh, the exporter guide. So this is basically if you're an exporter and keen on to exploring uh, or wanting to know information around exporting. So we've launched a, a platform where you can go and find all this information. So it basically compiles all the information from different agencies, including uh, contact people, and also websites and also fees. So this gives you a bit of insight into within Fiji, how do you export and what are the processes involved in it? So we thought it was very difficult for a lot of exporters to find this. And this was one of the initiatives that we launched recently to assist our exporters to reach a different market and to understand the complexities of exporting. And uh, obviously we've got uh, you know, a series of exports which we've seen quite successful. 
series of expos that has happened we started from different countries now we in uh, in japan and we have over 70 fijian companies into health cosmetic food beverage and and among other sectors that have actually listed uh, and are promoting their services so basically this is an online exhibition where we try to promote fijian products overseas so i think that's that's one of the major initiatives that we actually launched and with it we also launched an investment symposium which we talked about last year which uh, sorry last few weeks ago which actually included you know a number of fijian investment opportunities that were there so those those are the things we had to do online in order to continue to promote you know investment and export uh, for fijian companies and also the fijian uh, the, the investment opportunities here so that's that's a very brief, brief uh, presentation on on what we offer as an organization please get in touch with us musharat is looks after the japan market if you've got any queries or anything would be happy to assist and guide you through the process so i'll uh, we happy to hear from mr saito today and he i'm sure will give us a much more insight into the japanese market thank you thank you thank you acting ceo so um at this stage if you just a kind reminder once again you can always um type your questions in the chat box and we will answer it during our q and so our next presenter this afternoon is mr riso saito the director of pic tokyo also known as pacific island center uh, by means of introduction pic was established back in 96 based on an agreement between the government of japan and the pacific islands forum pic aims to promote trade investment and tourism between the 14 forum island countries and japan i now warmly welcome mr saito sen to take us through his presentation please I thank you very much for the introduction, Ms. Larry. And hello, everyone. My name is Ryuzo Saito, Director, Pacific Island Center. I'm so honored to be at this Fiji Japan Trade Investment Mission 2021 and be able to speak in front of His Excellency, Mr. Kawakami, Ambassador, the Embassy of Japan in Fiji, and Mr. Chetty, Acting CEO, investment fizi and other distinguished participants. Today, I will talk about opportunities for export products in Japan and promotion of fizi agricultural products export. So I will share the screen with everyone. So please wait for a moment. And the table of contents is shown this section, who we are and Fiji's Fiji export to Japan and opportunities of Fiji's actual products export to Japan. And the last, PIC support for promotion of Fiji's export products in Japan. First, who we are. As Ms. Ari just introduced, BIC, Pacific Center is international organization established in 1996 by the government of Japan and the Pacific Island Forum. Our mission is also introduced by other missionary to support sustainable economic development of FICs through the promotion of trade investment and tourism between Japan and FICs. Regarding the promotion of trade, we are engaging two services. That is to promote exports from the FIC to Japan and to assist the FICs with cost-effective importing from Japan. Mr. Takahara, Marine Director, General Sydney, lectured on the latter and Japanese investment in FICs in this webinar last week. So I'd like to focus on the former, that is to promote export from the FICs and Fiji to Japan today. 
FICEs and the FIZIS Expo to Japan. I'd like to explain by using the data of the Statistical Handbook 2021 published by PIC last month. According to the table, Japan's imports from four minor countries in 2020 were about 235 billion yen or approximately US dollar, 2.2 million billion dollars, which is equivalent to 0.4% of Japan's total imports. The line graph below shows that Japan's import, as shown by the thick line, increased three to 3.5 times between 2013 and 2014-15, this was due to the start of LNG export from Papua New Guinea. Please see the pie chart on the light below, which shows a composition of imports from FICs in 2020. Papua New Guinea's LNG accounts for 70% of Japan total imports from foreign many countries, while Papua New Guinea's energy and metal and copper, silver, aluminum accounts for 25%. Next, 3.9% is fish and remaining 1.1% is other products. This part chart shows Japan's import from Fiji with breakdown of items during the last 13 years. The dark color is wood chips and light color, blue color is fish. The import amount of the has been gradually declining, mainly due to the decrease of fish, that is tuna. Regarding the 2020, the ratio of the wood chips and fish to total imports is 67.5% and 25%. Remaining 80% is other products of which detail I will explain on the next page. This is a list of the main FIC's export products, which has classified, as previously mentioned, other products. The yellow color highlighted line is for Fiji. Solar and agricultural livestock, fisheries, whole forest, and others. Fisheries excluding and tuna. And would you see the agricultural and corn? Honey, spices, ginger, chocolate, coffee, and feedstuff for animal. Of these products, I'll explain the current situation and the future trend in Japan for coffee, chocolate, ginger, turmeric, and others. So I'll explain, talk about, I will talk about an opportunities of physics Agricultural Product Expo to Japan. First, coffee. Before expanding coffee, I will talk about a recent case that PIC helped a Japanese NGO, Gravity Corporation, to import fusion coffee for the first time. This will be a good reference case for exporting coffee and other agricultural products to Japan in the future. Gravity Corporation is NGO exchanges, promoting exchanges between Fiji and Japan, which was established five years ago with corporate philosophy of make, more, make Japan more fun with Fijian culture. They started in promoting Fijian coffee in a manner of conveying the story and, story and value of Fijian coffee to Japanese consumers and imported the first Fijian coffee beans 
last October. Gravity Coop plans to connect with coffee farmers and producers in Fiji and other Pacific Island countries to increase the coffee import with a great care of coffee beans for their midterm goal next two to three years. PIC assisted the activities in the Fiji Public Private Joint Economic Commission and Foodex Japan 2021. Now, I'd like to talk about the coffee market in Japan. Japan is third largest coffee consuming country in the world. The volume 2020 is about 390,000 tons. And the focus for the future is 400,000 tons to 450,000 tons per year, which is expected to remain flat. This is a breakdown of imports by country. Brazil is always in the first place, but Vietnam is rapidly catching up. These two countries plus Colombia account for 70% of Japanese import. Papua New Guinea among the Pacific Island countries, Papua New Guinea's coffee was imported by 1,015 tons in 2020. The Japanese coffee market is unique in two ways. The first is that Colombia, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and Guatemala are well known or popular among Japanese people. This is not the case with the top two importing countries, Brazil and Vietnam. Countries with a unique image seem to be the key. It is a kind of the brand market. For example, Guatemala participates in the specialty coffee exhibition in Japan every year. It can be said that steady marketing efforts are bearing fruits. Another reason is that the demand for the specialty coffee has been increasing in recent years. It is said to be equivalent to about 10% of coffee consumption. This is partly due to the fact that Japanese coffee drinkers are becoming more sophisticated and selective in their taste. Due to the rarity of the special coffee, their quantity is limited but the price is high. This is niche marketing. I think that these two points, image and specialty coffee, will be very helpful for the future sales of Fijian coffee to Japan. Next is chocolate. According to the ICA, International Coffee Confectioner Association, and Kaobisco, the Association of Chocolate, Biscuit, and Confectionery Industry to, of Europe, Japan chocolate consumption is ranked third in the world in 2017. However, this data does not include the consumption of the United States and other countries that do not publish their data. The consumption of chocolate in Japan has grown by 23,000 tons, about 9%, from about 253,000 tons to 276,000 tons in the five years from 2014 to 2018. The annual import volume of chocolate is about 25,000 tons in 2019. Of this amount, 257, uh, out of this amount, 257 kilograms is imported from Fiji and 706 kilograms, kilograms from 
and New Caledonia in Pacific Island countries and territories. The chocolate market in Japan is growing steadily and reasons for this are as follows. The first reason is that high value added, high unit prices products are increasing due to the spread of the bean to bar concept, which involves integrated production from cacao beans to chocolate. Second, is that people are becoming more habituated to eating high cacao products as health benefits of cacao have been featured on TV programs and opportunities for consumption are increasing. Thirdly, government policies and employers' initiatives have accelerated women's entry into the workforce and as their income increases, their preference for luxury chocolate is spreading. Ginger. Ginger imported, imported and the various forms and the recent years the import volumes has been stable at 80,000 tons. For import, for import destination, most of the fresh ginger is imported from China. This table is ginger import by country for the last five years. China is by far the biggest supplier with share of 74%, followed by second largest supplier, Thailand, 22%. Fiji export is not so big, but has been constantly exporting their ginger to Japan. Regarding trends of consumption, the supply of ginger has been hovering around 130,000 tons per year, showing a stable consumption trend. It is conveniently used in seafood dishes, cooking with pork, and a wide variety of sweets, such as gingerbread and ginger ale in Japan. Ginger, which can be kept on hand in variety of forms, such as powders and pickles, in addition to refrigerated and frozen, is used by the Japanese people to help build a healthy body. Turmeric. This table shows spices import by types. Turmeric is the fourth largest imported spice in Japan and its share four to five percent. By country, India is by far the biggest supplier with an import share of about 80%, followed by China with 70%. Fizi volume is not big, but it has been continuously spraying to Japan for the last four years. For your reference, regarding curry import, India is also far the biggest supplier to Japan with a share of 73%, followed by UK 10%. Fiji is a regular supplier to Japan, 350 kilograms per year. About 20% of curry powder is turmeric, so future trend of turmeric will link with consumption trends of curry, which is one of the most popular flavors in Japan. While the overload curry production is tre uh, trending slightly decrease, but future trends are characterized by the foreigners. First, steady demand for the eating out with Cali. Demand for Cali at the restaurant 
can be expected to remain strong in the future as it is in demand for both lunch and dinner. Consumers want to eat it on a regular basis and it is the first food that can be eaten easily. Second, increase in characteristic curry and retort orientation. Consumption of retort pouch curry, which is easy to prepare and offers a variety of flavors, is expected to continuously increase. In the future, it will be important to provide consumers with the pleasure of choosing curry with various characteristics. Others, I will talk about taro and kava. Taro, fresh taro import is required passing the plant quarantine inspection. Process taro such as a flower may have a good marketing chance for health conscious consumers in Japan as a gluten-free food. Key points are high quality, stable supply, and skillful cooking methods. Kaba. Kaba products are classified as pharmaceutical ones in Japan, so importers need to get license from Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare after troublesome approval procedures. For your information, PIC concluded MOU with Pharma Plus this year to cooperate on promoting agricultural products from Pacific countries in the Japanese market. We hope this partnership could also contribute to expediting Fijian agricultural products export to Japan. Last but not least, PIC's support for promotion of Fiji export products in Japan. Online promotion. COVID-19 pandemic had an effect on promotion activities in the Japanese market as a whole, and promotion using the internet and online tool has become normal to almost all the businesses who are wishing to find importers. Considering the trend of promotion of trade, Pacific and Pacific Island Center also put large emphasis on online promotion and have been looking for the most suitable opportunities for businesses in the Pacific Island countries. In terms of online promotion, we have an original webpage in Japanese, introducing products and business in the Pacific who looks for Japanese importers. Usually, when a business gets in touch with us, we recommend considering a broad information to our website as a first action. This is the web page which anyone can see and it is free, so it is a good start to present information in Japanese media. PIC also have a list of the Japanese companies that could potentially show their interest in businesses in foreign countries. We always wide research and try to find suitable business counterparts in Japan, depending upon requests from PIC, FIC's private companies. Also, PIC has been hosting country-focused online seminars since 2020. We invite some businesses to do a presentation and introduce their products for Japanese audience. When we have been discovering the possibilities of online promotion, we check availability of interpersonal promotion. Usually, our activities of interpersonal promotion result in participating in exhibitions, 
in Japan and invite businesses from the Pacific Islands to exhibit their products at the venue and meet potential buyers in person. The exhibition we often join is Foodex, sometimes in cooperation with Jetro. Foodex is the biggest food beverage trade show in Asia, where Japanese and international businesses, such as wholesaler, retailers, hotel, restaurants, factories, participate from all parts of Japan and all over the world, including Oceania. We will participate in Foodex Japan 2022 next March. PIC sometimes provided participants from Pacific countries with financial support depending upon the yearly budget. Another major exhibition for PIC is International Seafood Show. This is the biggest seafood exposition in Japan. PIC participated in 2019 for the first time to enhance fishery business between Pacific countries and Japan. Last year, four companies, including Fiji, participated in the e-commerce version in 2020. PIC will participate International Seafood Show 2021 in Tokyo Big Site during November 18. We also conduct business mission in cooperation with Ministry of Foreign Affairs Japan and call for Japanese businesses to visit one of the Pacific Island countries to see some sites and discover new connections. New connections to promote their businesses in the Pacific Island countries. Recently, we visited Fiji in February 2020 and had a business seminar and networking sessions with local public and private sectors. PIC is planning and carrying out various projects and delighted to assist businesses of Pacific countries to enhance their business opportunities with Japan. So please access to our website and check e-news from Japan to catch information about our updated activities. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you so much, Mr. Seto-san. We really appreciate that. And indeed, I think that was some very useful insights into export opportunities into Japan. We will now open the floor for audience questions. So during our registration uh, process, we actually received a few questions already. Um, I will just go through three of them at least for now before um, Acting CEO can answer the ones which have just come in uh, through our live session. So the first question actually came in from Ms. Mr. Muhammad uh, Ajmal Nawaz. And his question was, what is the upcoming market for products or services that Japan has where Fiji can seriously tap into and has the ability to form a partnership in? I think that question has been very well answered by the presentation from Mr. Seito Sen. And for all those in attendance at the moment, we would definitely share this presentation with you via email. And uh, I'm pretty sure you can um, see those products at least, which has opportunities to be exported from Fiji at the moment. The second question came in from a registered local exporter and the question was, we are looking for importers of turmeric root in Japan. Now, as part of the month long uh, Fiji Japan investment and trade mission, we are allocating the whole of next week towards our one to one meetings. And we are hoping to get in touch with uh, buyers or at least distributors in Japan uh, who might be looking for commodities such as turmeric or ginger. So I will definitely be in touch with Mr. Steve, who had uh, uh, asked that question. And the last question that I have here with me is from uh, Joyce Mano. How can I export coffee to Japan? 
Now, as highlighted by Mr. Seto Sen, I think uh, we have the likes of Bula Viti, who are quite keen on buying more coffee from Fiji. So we will definitely be doing that connection with them. But apart from that, if you're looking to exporting coffee uh, into Japan, then obviously you'll have to uh, consider the labeling requirements because it, is, uh, it falls under the food labeling law in Japan. You would also need to get a photosanitary certificate from BEF, uh, especially if you're importing uh, green coffee beans from Fiji. But uh, as far as connection is uh, concerned, we will definitely uh, connect Paradise Mart uh, with um, Bulaviti based out of Tokyo. Thank you. Those, those were the three questions from my side. Thank you, thank you uh, Mr. Setosen, you, you had anything to add on to what uh, Ms. Ali has? Before I go to a number of questions that people have asked, maybe you try to answer some of them. Yeah, and our, I have the good and the enough time to the, make a presentation about current situation in Japan and the future trend about and the, our Fiji and, and their agriculture products. So there are, I think the Fiji is one of their, uh, their biggest potential among the Pacific countries and their investment Fiji and will prepared and their assistance and to your local and exporters. So there we have been cooperating with investment Fiji to enhance the business chances between Japan and our Fiji. And also the incorporation is the uh, Fiji embassy in Tokyo. So we have a good network so there uh, we can and prepare, we, can, we will uh, be prepared to support any and producers, exporters from PZ to Japan. And uh, we have their other, uh, we are not so big and the offices, but we are very uh, uh, well noted and uh, uh, professionals. And the deputy director, uh, she joined this seminar and you can only see the name and Ms. Takahashi. And we have mm -hmm. the trade officer, uh, Ms. Yuke Matsui. So there maybe there are um, Salat and there uh, are and Chetty knows well, <laughs> know well. <laughs> so they are there quite and helpful. And uh, so we are quite happy and uh, to talk and with any the Fijian exporters at any time. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Seto-san. Uh, first of all, I think, uh, thank you very much for the team in, uh, in Japan. You, you guys have been really assisting us to understand the market. And obviously, when I'm ever in Japan, I try to visit your office and see, you know, see that connection. So it's, you, you've been really helpful, the team. Uh, a few questions, maybe we'll go through it. You did touch on Kava a bit. Uh, we have got a question from Mr. Praveen. He's been a regular to our seminars and has been quite a successful exporter out of Fiji in Kava and very... You know, very much involved in the kava industry here. So he's got, he's asking about connection with pharmaceutical companies for more enhanced development of value adding kava products. Do you think there would be chances, yeah, you know, we could uh, connect some of the kava companies from here into with pharmaceutical companies? Yes, thank you very much for the question. And uh, kava is one of the most popular products, not only from Fiji, but also other, other Pacific countries. Uh, we understand that and the cover is now uh, and, uh, quite popular in, in the developed countries like uh, Australia, New Zealand, United States. And there are also the, some the, and the good effect to the mediation like that. So there, however, and uh, as I explained in the, my in the presentation, uh, Japan is quite restricted to import and uh, cover this moment because they, uh, it is classified as a pharmaceutical ones. So it means, and uh, I, I dare to say the troublesome procedures. <laughs> so the, mm -hmm. it is required and the very scientific data and what's kind of the, and the effect this uh, cover and also what's kind of the actual results in other countries. So there, I'm not professional and the pharmaceutical, but you can merge and uh, you can support and there are any other uh, exporters from Pacific uh, Fiji, but, and uh, we have to prepare a lot of scientific and uh, a volume of the, and their certificate to persuade it and the Ministry of their, uh, their welfare and uh, so and so. So there are, it is a function to connect and the Fijian cover exporters with Japanese pharmaceutical and co companies, but are we, 
we have to and uh, and uh, uh, be prepared to walk so many and uh, uh, the documents and the certificate to make and them and uh, we understand and how cover is attractive to the Japanese consumers. So there, uh, maybe there you exporters have already the good experiences in the develop, in developed countries like Australia, New Zealand, United States. It may be the good example to show the Japanese pharmaceutical companies and those developed countries already uh, and the import and their imported copper products. And also it could have a good health and effect. And that's and scientific and their uh, data may be helpful uh, to make them understand how cover is attractive in Japanese market. Thank you, Mr. Seto-san. Uh, we can maybe, Mr. Praveen, you can uh, give us a you know email uh, or give us a call. We'd be happy to discuss. I think he's quite uh, experienced with that, especially with working with you know, now for cover for Australian market. I think you'll have a lot of information. So I'm sure we can have a separate conversation on cover uh, sometimes on into Japanese market, Mr. Praveen. Uh, we, we have a few other questions. One is from uh, Peter. Uh, in asking is, is there any channel that could help two operators access the Japanese market with regards to tourism? It's not, uh, I'm not really familiar in that spec tourism side of things, but uh, I'm not sure, Mr. Seto, if you've worked on, you know, with two operators to access Japanese market before. Thank you very much the question. Uh, tourism, I haven't in the time to talk about tourism this time. So maybe we have a good chance to talk about tourism and with uh, investment fees. Other uh, tourism is one of the biggest and in their industry, uh, not only fees, other and their uh, Pacific countries. And we are quite happy to cooperate with uh, uh, Fiji and and uh, the Japanese tourists to visit Fiji. Uh, maybe there and COVID-19 pandemic and there will be there and there uh, there less and less uh, as uh, and Mr. Chitty said that the direct flight and their, uh, your country opened the border soon. And in Japan also there, uh, since next Monday, the restriction to be there reduced. So there are more opportunity to go abroad. And it's a good time to promote and the tourism to the Japanese and uh, uh, their visitors. So there are two, usually we work with, uh, as far as the physical concern, the physical ways and the physical tourist bureaus in Japan and the two work together. And also we work and with a Japanese travel agent. And they have, of course, Fiji is one of the most popular market and the destination in Japan. So relatively people knows and uh, Fiji. So maybe there are, uh, that is, uh, if that's uh, uh, the, the person is uh, interest to promote and uh, tourism uh, in Japan and please contact us, we'll connect and get your interest. To with the potential and travel agent and other people. Thank you, Mr. Seto-san. Uh, please, please get in touch with us. Uh, we've I've left uh, you know our email addresses if it's not clear. It's info at investmentpg.org.fj, and we'll try to connect you with Mr. Seto and the team. Would be happy to assist. And also, I think we have a few other questions from Haram. I was asking about. Does Japan have you know, market for processed turmeric and also spice? And how can that uh, you know, get in the interested, com interested companies connected to, to him? So uh, please uh, you know, get in touch with us. I'm sure uh, you know, there is a market for processed turmeric um, because as Mr. Saito has mentioned, you know, Japan curry is quite popular uh, and they, you know, it's one of the popular dishes you'll see all the places and most a lot of restaurants serve that. So, I'm sure there is market for it. We can explore that. So, Mr. Seto, unless you've got something on processed turmeric uh, that you want to add. Uh, there, you explained very well. <laughs> you know more than me. And so there, as you said, the curry is very popular in Japan. And so there, a general trend and support the turmeric export from Fiji to Japan. So there are there, of course, we need more and detailed research uh, to yeah. there have opportunity uh, to uh, receive the fusion and the spices in Japan, but uh, the general speaking, and uh, you we have the and the potential and the growth in the future. Yeah, and uh, at the same time, like if you really analyze the um, export data that uh, from Fiji into Japan, 
like majority of the bundle is made out of um, commodities such as mineral water. We had we have the likes of tuna and wood chips, but um, turmeric, ginger, like you hardly see those commodities um, in that data. But I think if we really look into the process and if you meet the requirements of export, it can be something that can be easily um, exported into Japan. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think definitely, so. definitely, Japan has huge opportunity. You know, it's a very well developed market. Um, the other question we have, Mr. Seto, is on the connection with Japanese food grade uh, manufacturers. Uh, I think Praveen wants to know if uh, we can connect. I'm sure Praveen, we could do so. Japan has some very good technologies. I have seen it myself, especially in food manufacturing, and they would be happy to, you know, connect with Fijian companies that are keen on that. So you, you can get in touch with us and Mr. Seto and the team, I'm sure, have a lot of connection into, you know, um, with manufacturers that can supply machinery to Fiji. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. So that's, that's I think, somebody keen, uh, Mr. Praveen is keen on to importing, you know, into, the, into, into Fiji. Mm -hmm. Also, we have Mr. Tomo. Uh, I'm sure you know him. Mr. Tomo from uh, Fijiana uh, Coco, uh, he's joined us. Uh, so he said last year he exported about 600 kgs of chocolate into Japan. And he mentioned the date needs to be discussed with us, please. So I'm, I'm sure Mr. Tomo, you can get in touch with us. I'm, I didn't get your question, but would be happy to you know, discuss how we can work together. So he's been a big export of chocolate into Japan. That's good. And, yeah. Also, we have Mr. Jitendra. is uh, asking, other, other than auction markets, can Fiji Tuna be connected direct with supermarkets and retailers? Is that possible? Thank you very much, question. And uh, that is uh, and one of the uh, good questions. I think the tuna is one of the biggest export items to Japan. So there are, as I mentioned, uh, the PIC is working uh, in the fisheries. And uh, mainly the tuna is a very delicate and the uh, fish you can imagine. So there, it is related with a lot of the other, uh, and uh, what should say, the regulations and uh, restrictions. And of course, you have some restriction to the, take the fisheries and quota, blah, blah, blah. So there, besides those and the other uh, complex issue, uh, if you want to have some direct channel with the Japanese uh, buyers and the, uh, the supermarket and uh, some of the retailers, that's possible for us. And uh, previously we work in some of the, uh, the government and uh, organization in particular countries and to connect with the Japanese uh, their fisheries restaurants. So that's possible. And, uh, but the tuna is a very, maybe the professional items and uh, so, uh, what we have is a connection, and he or she would like to have uh, some of the information about their uh, tuna and uh, buyers in Japan. We'd like to cooperate with them as much as we can. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Jito. Mr. Jitendra, I think, is, is an exporter of the tuna and other fisheries product. I'm sure he'd be keen to you know, explore. Uh, so, Mr. Jitendra, you can get in touch with us. I uh, would be happy to connect and see how we can you know, facilitate that into you know, other markets or other distributors. Uh, we also have Mr. Abel Camillo, who has joined us for a few seminars. And, um, he, he's, and his question is more to the you know, investment opportunities with Japanese investors for their land. Uh, Mr. Camillo, you can get in touch with us. We'd be happy to you know, list you as part of our investment symposium and find out if there is you know, not only Japanese investors, but other investors from around the world would be keen on to you know, the properties and investment uh, you know, sites available at the moment for investment. So that's, that's uh, would be happy to facilitate that. I think that's, um, we have some more questions, uh, Mr. Seto. So we'll, we'll finish off very, very, very soon. I think people are really keen on to exporting to Japan. Is there demand for certified organic noni juice in Japan? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've worked on this space. You know, I've seen a lot, lot of them in your office. So is there any, any demand for it? Yes, thank you very much. The question too. And Inoni is almost very popular and one of the and, uh, products from Pacific countries. 
So there, as far as the PIC, uh, PIC Island countries, and there are some noni juice from the Tonga and Samoa and uh, Palau and some of the countries. So there, relatively, the noni juice market also including the New Caledonia too. <laughs> so uh, the market of the noni juice already established and of course competing with uh, uh, the other areas. So they have the channels and you have the competitive and products means the quality and the price. You can have the opportunity to develop the market in Japan. And only is, and there are, I think it's a good chance, but depending upon the compet and the competitiveness of the, your products in the Japanese market. Yeah, so, Mr. Has... yeah please go ahead. Sorry, sorry, continue Mr. Seto. Oh yeah, if, and uh, the company that uh, has an interest to uh, develop the market in Japan, uh, we are ready to cooperate with that company and to connect Japanese and uh, buyers or sellers. Okay, thank you. Uh, so also Mr. Semla, uh, on, the, on the same person that has asked about the, and the Noni is also asking which tropical frozen festivals would be the, Jap uh, would the Japanese consume? So, I'm, I'm not sure if you can answer that now, but I'm sh uh, sure we can, you know, you, we can get in touch and see how we can, you know, assist with that. So which tropical frozen festival would uh, the Japanese consume? Uh, could you repeat again? So the question is which tro uh, tropical frozen yeah. festival would the Japanese consume? <laughs> <laughs> so what's Topical and the products and consumed in Japan. Are there, yeah. maybe there, uh, let me, let me see. Sorry, I missed in the, uh, that screen, but I, you may remember uh, there the list of their uh, their export products to Japan. So their uh, their what kind of their and their uh, vegetables and foods. And uh, I have already talked about and their uh, spices, ginger, coffee, chocolate, and taro, and maybe coconuts and uh, pepper. And uh, so that is uh, a most popular and. Uh, vegetables, the fruits, and Japan from tropi tropical, especially Pacific Island countries. Sorry, is it there? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure to just... know the, the person? <laughs> no, maybe, maybe we can, we can have a chat with, we have a lot of questions I think coming in. We'd be happy to, you know, you can get in touch with us. We'd be happy to you know, facilitate the discussion further since we only have no, only a few uh, you know, minutes left to finalize this. So there is also a question on organic coffee from uh, Joyce Manu. Yes, I'm sure there's a market for it. Also, Mr. Jitendra is asking about possibility of duty concession for entry of tuna and fisheries products into Japan. I'm sure we can you know, talk about that later on. Uh, I'm sure we won't, might not have all the answers now. Uh, also, Mr. Mohammed is asking about skincare products. So I think there is a lot of keen interest, uh, Mr. Seto, into Japan. So we have a lot of work to do together to make this possible. So we will uh, definitely, our time has run out. But uh, for everyone, please get in touch with either me or Musharat. would be happy to facilitate. Just uh, maybe, uh, Musharat, if you want to show everyone your email address, um, or I'll get uh, our IT team to just, you know, to show us the, the last slide where we had the email address. You can, this is the email address you can get in touch with us. And we will, uh, I'm sure now, yeah, you can see. So, Mushar looks after the Japanese market. Uh, so, please get in touch with her. And we'd be happy to have this discussion further uh, and facilitate a more discussion with more answers, uh, you know, specifically to the products you're kind of trying to get into Japan.